Hey guys, uh, back at it again with Miss Matthews. Sorry, my voice is kind of weird, but um, back at it. Uh, today we're going to be doing the three branches of government. So you've probably heard the three branches of government. Um, it's probably what your parents are always complaining about, but just like mine. But um, the three, three branches of government are there for the people and to help the people out um, where they can. So we have the three branches of government. So the first branch is called the executive branch. So the executive branch is basically where the president lives. So that's the White House. And so the president of the United States is a leader of the ex uh, executive branch. So he's like the man in charge. I have some of uh, the duties right there, but I like watching videos. I'm more of a visual person instead of just reading it. So we're gonna watch a quick little video. Let's see if he'll let me. Share screen. Do you dream of becoming the president of the United States one day? The job comes with some pretty sweet perks. For starters, you'd be making $400,000 a year. And you'd also have your own jumbo jet, Air Force One, and even your own theme song, Hail to the Chief. You'd get to move to the most famous address in America, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C., the White House. You'd have your own bowling alley, movie theater, and pool. Sounds like a pretty cool gig, right? Well, it's also one of the toughest jobs in the world. It comes with some pretty big responsibilities. As president, you would lead one of the three parts of the U.S. government, the executive branch. That's the branch that carries out and enforces the nation's laws. You'd also get to decide which proposals actually become laws. You'd have a vice president and choose a group of advisors called a cabinet to help you out. You'd also be the commander in chief of the whole U.S. military. And as head of foreign policy, you decide how the U.S. will work with other countries. So you'd meet with world leaders, help countries in need, and sign agreements with other nations. Those are just a few of the president's jobs. What do you think? Still up for the task? Well, not just anyone can be president. The U.S. Constitution lists three requirements. The president must be a natural-born U.S. citizen, meaning you were born on American soil, or at least one parent is a U.S. citizen, have been a U.S. resident for at least 14 years, and be at least 35 years old. Sorry, kids. Looks like we'll have to wait just a little while longer. Aww. But no worries. We have plenty of time to prepare to be president. So that was a little quick video that I had on there we go. All right, I get it. So like I said, the president is like the leader of the United States. He's like the leader of the executive branch. So some of the duties, like you saw in the video, enforces federal laws and recommends new ones. So he's the guy that's like, Hmm. So let's think. I want to have a law where you can't eat cake for breakfast. So he's the one that, you know, would draft it up, and make it a bill, and then send it over to somebody, which we'll learn about later. Also, he is the serves as the commander in chief of the armed forces, Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. So he's like above, of, like he is the top dog of the armed forces. So like he is the one that's like, y'all go to battle here. Y'all go to battle here, y'all, da, da 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 So he's like in charge of that. And then he meets with other leaders of countries. So he comes up with, um, he meets with people like in Turkey, uh, the leader of Turkey, uh, South Korea, stuff like that. He meets with those people and comes up with solutions to problems or like trading or treaties and stuff like that. All right, so we have the uh, president's cabinet. So uh, carrying out laws of uh, the United States is a big job. So to help, the president has a vice president. 
and a department of head who advises the president on issues and helps him carry out policies. So these are like, these are other people that help his job make it kind of easier. It's still a pretty big responsibility, but you know, it's, it, he has other people like his vice president and his department heads to help him out. So the vice president serves as president of the Senate, which we'll learn about in a minute, and becomes a the president if the president can no longer serve. So um, I know some of you have seen White House Down uh, with Jamie Foxx and Channing Tatum. So in that movie, the um, president, he is dead. And so the vice president has to step up, like he has to take over. And then uh, later in the movie, the vice president dies, stuff like that. But after, if the president is dead, assumed dead, then the, the vice president will take over. Um, so also the leaders in each department, so like going back to what I said, the department heads, they're called secretaries. So um, there's many different secretaries. I couldn't put them all on the, sli on the next slides, but there's a lot of different secretaries for a lot of different departments. And these secretaries are called, uh, make up the president's cabinet. So don't think about like an actual cabinet door. It's, actually, it's just a group of people as a cabinet, okay? So we have the cabinet departments. So the first one obviously would be the cabinet of uh, the Department of Education provides money for public schools and loans to help people stay, uh, attend college and make sure there's equal uh, access to education and promotes educational exit excellence throughout the nation. So um, this is basically school. So this is like she, um, the Secretary of Education is Elizabeth Prince DeVos. Uh, she runs like um, how schools are run, uh, how uh, how much money goes to schools around the world, like stuff like that. So she's basically the one about public schools, not private schools or anything like that, because it's private money. But public schools and how um, things are run like that. Um, so then we have the Department of Transportation. So they are the people that are in charge of the highway planning, construction car, truck, air, and uh, railroad safety. Uh, so they basically deal with transportation. So like the movement of things in cars, planes, trucks, and the safety of that. And also waterways, ports, highways, oil and gas pipelines. So also dealing with how to fuel those trucks and cars. Um, Secretary of Transportation is Elaine El Chow. I hope I'm saying these names right, probably not. But uh, then we have the Department of agriculture they're the uh that's the person she uh she or he is the person that um supports farmers and uh stuff like that so for ag agricultural products um and protects quality in daily food supply so basically they're the ones that um look out for the farmers and the people that are providing the food for america so they are the one that gives them money and stuff like that and supports them in the ways that need to be supported um the also uh sunny P uh purdue is the current one uh then we have the department of treasury collects taxes um so basically they deal with money they deal with how money is manufactured um and the ways to help the economy um so they were probably uh if you have heard that the you know coronavirus we uh people older people are, are getting money or call it, it's called a stimulus check so they are getting money to help uh if you know if your parents were laid off stuff like that uh if you cannot no longer work because of the coronavirus the department of treasury probably drafted up how to give out the money or how much money uh stuff like that is so um so they're in charge of basically the money of america um the current Treasurer, uh, tre Depart Secretary of Treasury is Stephen T. McCullen. Mechanic, me I don't know. Uh, so then we have the Department of Defense. So they are, um, they are uh, providing military, or responsible for providing military forces with, the, with what they need. So like tanks and guns, stuff like that for the military. Now they are not like the president. The president is uh, the person that sends them off to war or um is in charge of the military the department of defense is just in charge of getting them the, the supplies that they need to go off to war 
So they're more of the uh, kind of like the background guy where the president tells them what to do. And the Department of Defense is like, here you go, this is what you need to do. So, so that's Mark Esper. Then we have the Department of um, Health and Human Services and the look after people's health and uh, provide services that include conducting me medical research, preventing diseases, and um, assuring safety of food and drugs. So again, they were probably involved in the uh, coronavirus deal where um, they're trying to get a vaccine for it. So um, they're probably ahead on ahead of that too. So um, yeah, so they're basically dealing with people's health and how to keep everybody safe, like people safe. Um, and then we have the Department of Energy. Uh, they research and develop energy systems that are friendly to the environment, but not too expensive. So, um, so they're researching like solar panels, um, maybe the wires that are outside, you know, the little long wires that you see outside. Uh, those, those have energy in them. So you can have cell phone service. Um, there's cell phone towers also, internet uh, towers and whatnot. So they are in charge of that. And that's Dan Brulletti, I guess. So, but like I said, there's so many different departments. We have the commerce, they're in charge of business, uh, justice. Uh, so they're basically the defendant. If the, they're the ones being sued, they're the one that um, would step up in that position in uh, civil actions. Um, then we have labor, which is work, ho housing and urban development, uh, interior, uh, veteran affairs, homeland security, and state. So there's so many different uh, department heads and cabinet members, but they're all trying to, trying to um, make the United States a better place for us to live in. Okay, so that was just the executive board or branch. So now we have the judicial branch, and I think the judicial branch is probably the easiest branch to remember. They, um, the judicial branch of government is made up of the court system. So the Supreme Court is the highest court in the land. It was established by the Constitution. Other federal courts are established by Congress. So basically, they are the people that have the gavel, you know, on TV where you're watching Judge Judy and all them. Yep, they have the gavel, and they're like, you ate cake for breakfast, you are going to jail. That is the judicial branch. But the judicial branch is made up of the Supreme Court. So Supreme Court... Um, Hold on, I'll get right into that. But the Supreme Court is bigger, not bigger, but they uh, have more responsibility than the little courts do. But courts decide, uh, decide arguments about the meanings of laws, how laws are applied, and whether law, uh, laws break rules of the Constitution. So basically, they're the ones with the gavel and says, you ate cake for breakfast, so you're going to jail kind of thing. So again, the Supreme Court, here's cases that have made their way through the lower, lower court system. So say that the court, um, the uh, so you're you're at your court and you're being sued because you ate cake for breakfast, but you didn't like that ruling. So you wanted to go to another court. And you didn't like that ruling. So you um, you go to the Supreme Court and you're getting a fair judgment at the Supreme Court because that is the highest court you can go to. Is the Supreme Court. But there, uh, there are more than 7,500 uh, 7, cases sent to the Supreme Court every year. Only about 80 to 100 cases are actually accepted. So it's a lot of cases. So if you have this case and you uh, feel like it was not defended correctly, you can send it to the Supreme Court and they will review it and see if they, you get a better judgment on it. Um, but again, it's really hard because it's only 80 to 100 cases are actually accepted. You know, that's crazy. But uh, the Supreme Court has nine justices, so there's nine of them. And one, uh, one, of the, one of the nine being the chief justice. So he is like the head of the Supreme Court. The just, uh, justice of the Supreme Court are appointed by the president and approved by the Senate and can serve for life. So what it means by serve by li uh, for life, that means they can serve for until they don't have a life anymore. So they could serve forever if they wanted to. Um, but usually, you know, they retire at some point. But if they want to serve for life, that is their choice. Um, so they're appointed by the president. So the president's like, I want so-and-so to um, be on the Supreme Court. Then the Senate is like, well, I like that person too. 
So let's vote them in. So they vote them in kind of thing. So they approve. So then we have our last branch is called the legislative branch. And it's probably the most complicated branch for me at least because it has two different parts and two different places. It's really complicated, but stay with me. I will try to make this as simple as possible. So we have the legislative branch, we have the House of Representatives and we have the Senate. The US Congress, so the US Congress is what it's called, is made up of two parts, the House of Representatives and the Senate. The Congress meets at the US Capitol, so that picture right here, in Washington DC. Its primary duty is to write, debate, and pass bills, which are then passed on to the president for approval to become lost. So they are, you probably haven't heard, you're probably too young, but there's a song called, I want you to look it up if you can, uh, called um, Schoolhouse Rock, and it's a brand, and Schoolhouse Rock, a bill, I'm just a bill, and it's called, uh, it's called I'm just a bill because he's just a bill sitting on Capitol Hill, and he's waiting to become a law, and it's a super long process of bill becoming a law, so I want you to go and watch that. I wish I, I had time to pull it up. I love that song though. But uh, it's a song and it's about this bill. He's a lonely bill about uh, buses stopping at railroads and he's trying to become a law and he's trying to explain it to you. <clears throat> but that's what a bill is. A bill is just uh, something that's written up. And like, like I said, the president can write up a bill and say, um, I want this to be a law eventually. So then they, the Congress debates it, and then uh, when it's either passed or denied, it's uh, passed to the president for approval to become a law. So the House of Representatives is one part of the Congress. In the House, the represent representation, which means how many people are in the House of Representatives, <clears throat> is based on the number of people living in each state. So the House of Representatives, it, there's around 435, I believe. Um, therefore, states with larger populations have more representation than states with smaller population. Each state has at least one representative. So, like for example, at the bottom, Pennsylvania has more people living in it, so it has 19 representatives, but Delaware doesn't have that many people in it, so it only has one. But everybody has at least one. So the House of Representatives, um, they uh, serve terms of two years. So like I said, with the judicial branch, they, um, they can serve for life. They can stay on the board forever. But with House of Representatives, they can only serve two years. When the term is over, people from that state may choose to elect a new representative or keep the same one. So technically, they can stay in office forever if the people want them in that position, but for real, uh, only two years for each term. Uh, so thinking about running for representative from, for your state, you have to be 25 years old, be a U.S. citizen for the past seven years, and live in the state you represent. So if I wanted to be uh, the House of Representatives um, for Tennessee, I, I can't because I'm not 21. But I have, or I'm only 21, I'm not 25 yet. So the uh, citizen uh, for the past seven years, I have been, you know, because I've lived here most of my life. And then I live in the state that I, I would want to represent. But I would have to be 25. So then we have the Senate. So the Senate is um, different from the House of Representatives. Each of the uh, 50 states sends two people uh, to the Senate. Uh, so there's only a total of 100 senators. This means each state has an uh, equal amount of senators. So um, the Senate is smaller because there's only two per state. Like with the um, House of Representatives, there it's based on the uh, population instead of just it's based on the population. So like in this picture, Pennsylvania only has two and Delaware only has two for the Senate, okay? Each senator serves a term of six years, so it's a little bit longer than everybody else. Um, 
when their six year term is over, the people from the state may choose to elect a new senator or keep the same one, just like House of Representatives. Uh, there, theirs are kind of different. Uh, you must be 30, so I can't, still can't run. Um, be a U.S. citizen for the past nine years and then live in the state you represent. So that's the Senate. So here are the duties of the legislative branch. So um, again, the Senate and the House of Representatives are two different parts of Congress. In addition to making laws, the House and the Senate each have special duties. So they have their own thing that they're doing. Uh, the Senate can vote on any treaties, a conclusion to an argument or a truce that uh, the president makes. So if say the president is having, a, having some beef with um, another country and he signed and he, you know he meets with the world with that leader and he's like yo man i'm sorry you know I, let's let's draw up this treaty and let's forget about it so they draw up a treaty and uh draw up a treaty and it says like you know we're truce we're, we're good you know no more beef whatever then they send it over to the senate and the senate has to be like okay this is good vote yes or no uh, they also review and uh, approve presidential appointees. So uh, the cabinet, the secretary's cabinet and the Supreme Court justices. So like I said earlier, the president says, I want you, you, you to be on the Supreme Court and I want you to be on the secretary, uh, the cabinet of secretaries. The uh, Senate has to review and approve them. So they have to like, check off be like all right cool whatever so uh, the senate can hold a trial for a government official who has done something wrong so they are basically kind of like the judicial branch but not really so if somebody in gov in the government had, uh did something wrong they would go to trial at the, uh in with the senate um the house of representatives can recommend tax uh bills to become laws so, uh, like I said, they can recommend things, tax bills, to become laws, or um, decide if, if a government official should be put on trial before the Senate if uh, she or he commits a crime against the country. So, the uh, House of Representatives is the person that's like, you did something wrong, you going to trial with the Senate, you know? So, the special duties are kind of like checks and balances. So no part, no part of the government gets stronger than the other part. So they're all like intertwined with each other. So like, you know, House of Representatives decides if they go to trial with the Senate and the Senate votes on it. And then the president, you know, he, he's in there too, but they're all intertwined with each other. So nobody is higher than the other one or has more power. So did you know when Philadelphia was the capital of the United States, which it was eventually, you know, with the, with the bell, the Liberty Bell, it was at Philadelphia. Anyway, the House and the Senate met in Independence Hall. The uh, Senate met on, on the upper floor and the House met on the lower floor. Even today, the Senate is referred to the upper house and the House of Representatives is, low, is the lower house. So just a little fun fact there for you. All right, so I do have some games for us, and this is a website down here. It's called Contacting Congress. So if you have like some, maybe some issues you have, like I want to eat cake for breakfast, but that is a law. That's not really a law. I'm just saying, you know, if if you think that you know you have some ideas for Congress, you can contact you can contact them and email them and call them and stuff like that. But um, I have some games right here, and I'll put them in the link below so you can play them and I think they're really fun but uh, I hope y'all having a great day um that is the end of my powerpoint so uh I hope y'all have a great day and I will see you next Monday bye-bye